guitars and today I'm going to be showing you a chord and uh, it's not just any old chord it is what I would consider to be the most important chord to get you started now for me it's a big deal this first chord is a big deal and the reason it's a big deal is because I have a belief that if you can put three chords together Three chords. I believe the key to success at long, pleasurable life playing guitar is three chords. And it's not rocket science to understand why, because so many songs will revolve around three chords. Um, so that's something just to bear in mind that many, many, many songs can be played using just three chords. So, what I've been trying to do is think of how can I marry up some of the stuff that we've been looking at so far with the lead guitar side, the major scale and we've been building up chords, the concept of chords and what chords are. But now put this into some sort of practical playing example and give you something that you can really enjoy playing around with. So what would be that ideal first chord? The chord that I have decided on is a D chord, a D major chord. So the D major chord. Now why have I come up with the D major chord? Okay, well the D major chord the D major chord, it covers the top four strings of the guitar. There's a little bit of finger work involved down here. It's not overly complex, but the thing that I've decided upon the D chord, the reason why I want to start with this D chord most of all, is because of the array of variations on that chord that are all relatively simplistic, but very extraordinary uh, enjoyment from learning your D chord. Okay, so the D chord is a major chord, that's why we call it, I'm kind of being lazy and I'm calling it D, but really what we mean to say is D major. If you've been following my theory classes until now, you will know that D major will start from a D, that will be the root, then it will have a major third, the distance between the root and its third will be major, and it will have a fifth. So we're looking for a root, a major third, and a fifth. The reason, therefore, it starts from this uh, D string kind of answers itself. We're starting from the D, the third string down, and that's a D. So that is our root of the chord, the D. So we're going to be building potentially an octave from the root. We're going to be building major thirds and fifths, because that is what a major chord consists of. And if you've been following my, if this doesn't make any sense to you, if you don't understand what a root, a third, and a fifth is, go back to my earlier lessons, okay? And this is why it should make sense if you've been following, if you've been following them. So we're looking for roots, thirds, and fifths, okay? So if we go down here, the, the very, very first note that we're gonna be playing fretted, and we're gonna play it with our first finger, and we're gonna stick it here on the second fret on the G string. Okay, now if you hear that sound, that is the sound of the fifth. It's fifth, root of fifth. If you were playing the major scale, so what we're playing is root D, D here on the D here. One, two, three, major third, and fourth, and fifth. So we just want the root, the third, and the fifth. Those are the notes that we're going to hear in this D major chord in the open position. Roots, thirds, and fifths. So, let's have a look at some of them now. Now, hear this sound here? If I play this note here, same note. So all I've done to reference that is my major scale starting from the D. One, two, three. So that note there, we know is a fifth. See, how cool is that? We can now understand, we're starting to understand the chord that we've been building up 
this knowledge prior to now, and we're now starting to understand where this root three and five comes from. So we're going to now play uh, the next step. So we've got the first finger here on, on the fifth, the interval of a fifth. Now we're going to put our third finger on the B string on the third fret. So you should hear this. Okay. Now, what's that note? If you listen to the original note of the D, that is a root again. That is basically an octave higher. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay, so that's our octave. So, so far we've played a root, we've played a fifth, we've played a root, or an octave. Now we're looking for that all elusive major third, because it can't be a D chord without a major third. It's, it's either got to be a major chord or it's going to be a minor chord. If it has a minor third, it'll be a minor, it'll be a D minor. If it has a major third, it'll be a D major. So let's listen to this up here, our major scale again. One, two, three. Okay, that's the reference note. That's a third from D. Sounds a little bit out because the tuning may be slightly out, but that is a major third. So what we're doing here is playing the root. We're then playing a fifth, we're playing a root, and then we're putting our second finger in here, tucking that in here, on the second fret of the E string, and that creates our complete picture, our root, our third, and our fifth. Okay, so that's all well and good, and we could try playing some downward strokes, one and two and three and four and one and two and could play one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. So if you think of these one and two ands, it all helps you kind of get that flowing motion. Because if we look at your right hand technique, we want to get that hand moving nice and freely, nice and consistently. But what I'm really wanting to focus on here is this movement of the D chord. So let's say, for example, we go from that D, and then we take this finger off here, take, take the, the second finger off. So now we've got this. D. Now this sound here, I don't want to worry too much about what the chord is called right now, and I'm going to put it in the um, diagrams on, on the screen. But right now I don't want you to worry too much about it. I just want you to listen to it. movement. So moving from this D So there we have the uh, rhythm that I've just played. And all I'm going to do now is play a D major scale that we've been learning. We've been learning in C. So all I now do is move from C to D. So now D is our resolving point. It's our D major scale. We're playing a D major chord. So we're going to play the D major scale over the top. So let's whack in a bit of that. Singer, they could come up with some ideas. So these notes that I'm playing here, <laughs> you could have someone singing those notes. I'm playing a lead guitar, but those notes were, they fit.
So that is simply going from D. It's an add nine. It's an added nine, or I think you'd call it a D. I'll, I don't want to mention too many of the chord names because I'll, I'll reference them when I get home. But we're basically sticking in a two, a number two. <laughs> we're sticking in a number two into our G major chord. Da, 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 da. Um, okay, so um, it's the number two. So we're putting in, uh, we're adding a two. It's a, it's a note within the major scale. Two, one, two. We know a two, it's not a flat two, like in our Phrygian scale. It's a two, so it works. It's in our major scale. So. So, great. So now we've got something, we've got like a, a D, but we've got a bit of movement. Take that, take that echo off. So we've got. Little finger, little finger time. This one, Ugh. little finger. We're gonna put the little finger in. So exactly where, exactly where it naturally wants to drop because our, our third finger is, uh, sorry, our second finger is currently, if we go back to the D, our little finger is the only one we've got left. And this little finger just drops really nice and neatly straight into this gap here, straight under the uh, root uh, of the chord, or if you want to call it the, uh, straight under the, the third fret of the B string, we've got the third fret of the E string. It's got that raised feel, that raised. And you will hear this so much in, in guitar playing. This movement is so incredibly common. so much with this it's unbelievable so it's just going and and this is what's called so well you could work it out yourself this is what's so wonderful about the way we're learning so we've got a major third here and we're going up to so if that's a third what's straight above a third a fourth okay one little rule for you when you move the third out the way and you plop in a fourth instead, <laughs> it's called a suspended fourth. So if you've got no third in there and you put the fourth in, it's a sus four. So you will have heard of sus four chords. Some people on a different level of playing will have heard of sus four chords. If you've just started and this is the first time you've ever played a guitar, then you won't have heard of them and I'm telling you now, it's called a sus four. And this sus four movement between the, the sus four and then back to the third is incredibly common. This time I'm just gonna go between the sus4 and the, the regular D, okay, so. Okay, so um, we have then this movement. I'll take that off again. So we've got D, uh, sus4. To D. So that is a great movement to, 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 uh, to work on as well. From D, sus4, D. And as you can imagine, you could then bring those two together. Let's 
let's do something with that. So. Um... So, um, so we've got D. hoping that these chord movements will really give you some uh, pleasure uh, and, and what I'm really trying to do is give you a chord that you can get started on where you can hear movement within that chord so you haven't got to worry too much about moving to a million other uh, chords but you can also link it to the, the basic theory of the scale the major scale and you could play over the top of it with a basic looping device like what I've got here so um, the sorry he gets very offended it's not a basic looping device it's a jam pal it's my friend he doesn't argue with me and he inspires me he's down there uh so uh, it's a jam pal uh it's sorry he get uh, sorry about that um now then the um now here's one other one for you because i love this one too so if you hear d moving down but then we can just move the third finger down so the second finger just takes over from behind the third finger on the B string so we're going to move basically we're going to move the root down to the major seven so we now know we've got a root a five a major seventh and a ninth beautiful we've got a major seventh and we've got a ninth and we've got a root there's not even a major third in there but we know that the the way my brain would be working on that is we have a major seventh which gives it a major kind of sound it doesn't matter it just it just sounds lush beautiful two fingers so this is a nice movement between the whatever we're going to call this this chord the major seven add nine it's not a major seven add nine because there's no third in there. So the third is kind of, the majorness of it is kind of implied through the major seventh. Uh, so there's no third in there. So it's a major seventh and a major ninth. And that's the way I'm going to look at it for now. So um, all we care about is it sounds nice and it's from the D. It's using that D as the root. Lovely. So let's, let's do a little movement now. D. So practice that one. D to our major seven add nine. So I'm now going to play the black on the looper. Now 
Jonathan, this is where it gets really fun. Because now we've got D. Major seven, that nine. Sus four. Back to three. Back to the D chord that my. When I say back to three, I'm thinking of the major third from the fourth, so my brain's kind of saying something out loud. So we're going. Uh, so we could go uh, D. Literally, you make it up. You completely make this up. This is the whole point of what I'm showing you. I just want you to have fun with moving these fingers. So let's look at what we're really doing. Apart, forget the names for a minute. Let's just look at what we're doing. We're playing a D. We're taking a finger off, and it's creating another lovely sound. We're then bringing that second finger back in to drop in behind on the second fret on the B string, and we're playing this lovely sounding chord, which we can take that finger off, and then we can go back to the D. We could drop the back down like that, and then we can put the sus4 in, the little finger. song coming out there you know it's just a D chord and this is exactly what I wanted to occur I, I you know it comes it's in your head and you think well, yeah 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 I know it back in here it working this is great um, so um, yeah so so this is it with uh, some acoustic -y stuff so now don't worry I'm not gonna do another sort of goodness how long um, I want to just throw it into context in a kind of an electric -y kind of uh, view oh yeah Oh, wait, this, it's funny, when you, when you go from a playing that an acoustic guitar to an electric guitar, it just feels like you've got a little toy. Uh, so it's great, yeah, a little, little. Oh, a little cute sound. Oh, my might sound so cute, isn't it? So we will spank that up a bit in a second, so. So, 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 uh, what should we do? Let's, let's do something similar. So, so there's our D, there's our D chord. We'll, we'll beef it up a bit, a uh, bit of volume. So let's play this D chord now with a bit of a, bit of a, bit of a crunchy feel to it. I've just put my little uh, uh, tube drive on. How about a bit of rock and roll? to the uh, that kind of 70 90 chord that we did here with the two fingers could whack on a bit of super super distortion uh, make it really ramp I'm really ramping up the overdrive. So here we play a root. Goes, goes to the root, the fifth to the root. That's a very common root five and a root, very common rock metal y rocking.
got something like that down here. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that this this movement of these just these few chords give you something to work on and something to inspire you. Everything I've played there is based around a D chord, D major chord. There's a little bit of a little bit of a thing in here that, that you need to sort of. Um, here's a really great bit of knowledge for you. In that core, in in those 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 ideas that I was doing here, we had the major third. We used the ninth, didn't we? We had the two, which is the same as the ninth. We had the four, so we know that's in there. And we also had the major seventh, because we dropped down from the root to the major seventh. So we know there's a natural fourth, we know there's a seventh, we know there's a ninth, and we know there's a root third and a fifth. Basically, we have built up the major scale around the D. Okay? We've used the one, we've used the two, we've used the three, we used the four, we used the five, we used the seven. So we haven't used a six. We didn't put a six in. Let's, let's see, let's find a six. So there's our root, there's our six. We're gonna make this, we're gonna put a six in. So we've used every note in the scale. There's, so, so look, root, five. We're looking for either that note there, that could what that we could put that in, or we could put it in the bass down here below. below. Ooh, we could put it below the D, so we could do something like this. Oh, oh my God, that's nice. Would that be getting too complicated? It's so much fun, though, isn't it? Like because, for example, we've used every tone of the scale. All I've just done is have look. I've gone through them and I found out we haven't used a sixth yet. So I know where the fifth is. We've got the root. We've got the fifth. Okay, well, we know the sixth is a tone above the fifth, and then I've just dropped it down a root lower, an octave lower. Okay, so if we play with the same chord that we were doing before, but we whack in the bass note here, and oh, how nice is that? That's going to sound lovely with a bit of echo on. A bit of chorus. This is just to throw you off at the end, because uh, I'm now going to go into a world of my own. Oh my god. Oh, this is so nice. See, if I was, if I had other things, didn't have other things to do, I'd be doing this all night. So there's our D. Then we are now, but the trouble is it moves, makes it complicated for you because you've got to stick a finger in there. But I'm just going to leave you with that chord at the end. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with that chord at the end because that's beautiful. That complements all of it, but it's a bit more advanced. And basically, it's exactly everything we've been doing. See if you can work out that chord and tell me the name of it. From our context, it's a, a D, it's got a ninth, it's got a sixth. D, sixth, bleh. <laughs> but this shows you how theory works, it's so wonderful. And that is a gorgeous chord to end on. And if we end on that chord, everything that we've done, we've included every note of the major scale, the D major scale. And, um, so, root two. Which, which chord had got the two? This one. Which chord have got the three? All of them. Got, well, D major has a three. Which has got the four? Sus four. One, two, three, four. Which has got the five? All of them have got the five. Root three, five. Uh, six. The six, we've got the new one. 
lovely. And the six. Which has got the seven. This one. Isn't that amazing? We've covered all of the notes in the key of D. That is so cool. Ah, oh, taught myself something there. Okay, right, well, I'll mash that all up into a traditional video of some kind. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you liked it. Yeah. All right, I had fun doing that, okay. Um, that's a new vintage uh, uh, relic, uh, wonderful bit of kit and uh, thank you to my Dovina people at Dovina uh, for producing such amazing acoustics too. Uh, okay guys see you soon. I'll, um, I'll see you in a few days when I've edited this down into something usable. Okay bye!